call ourselves? In, in, engage gamers, no? Sure. We are very engaged gamers. We are very engaged gamers. So my name is Chris from Theus Ex Machina, and I'm with... Nicole. Nicole, who is my fiancé, although she's not defined by that status. <laughs> and we are, re we are reviewing small games or little un un you know, obscure games. And the first one is this one here, Cauldron Master, by, I was going to say Gaming Rules, by Alley Cat Games. Uh, now, uh, to fully learn the rules, I'm going to kick it over to myself in the future. This is Cauldron Master, a very small box with several decks of cards within. No tokens, no dice. Each player receives three cauldron cards, which I probably wouldn't be able to see three times fast. There is a two-card cauldron, a three-card cauldron, and a four-card cauldron. <sighs> see? Each player also receives the same five witch cards, which I'll put down in the incorrect order. Let's try that again. We have the apprentice, the mage, the herbalist, the shaman, and the goddess. Apologies for the glare. The lower numbers activate sooner but accomplish less. The higher numbers activate later but can accomplish more. A traditional simultaneous action selection game. Each player also receives one random recipe card which can net bonus points when a filled cauldron is emptied. They are the only random element to distinguish each player. If cards in a cauldron match those on any of the three rows of your recipe card, score additional points. There is also the favor of Hecate card given to each player. Hecate? Hecate? Hecate. Thank you, Internet. The favor of Hecate breaks ties between identical cards. By the way, note the proper spelling of favor. If you possess the identical cards as well as Hecate, you win. If two others tie, the holder of Hecate selects the winner. Depending on player count, lay down the ingredient cards. In this case, for two players, two by four, face up. We see a variety of different names, but only three different symbols. Red skulls, orange moons, green chevrons. Pink hearts on its stars, yellow moons, green clovers. Yes, yeah, very funny. And yeah, I swear I did shuffle these cards. And there's my OCD cooking off there. Like in every simultaneous action game, each player selects a card and lays it face down. Once everyone has selected, cards are revealed and activated from lowest to highest number. Like I said, lower numbers get to go first, but they can potentially gain less. The objective is to score points, and these manifest with the game's second mechanic, set collection. In this situation, Nerebalus will go first, which allows that player to gain three chevrons or three crescent cards, and would be an idiot to not gain these three toadstools. When a cauldron is filled, it is emptied and scored, so I wouldn't put these three into a two-cauldron. Ca mm. Better the three or four. In the three, it would be emptied immediately and score points, and we can see with three identical cards, we would gain 12 points. If it had been two toadstools, it would be six. We could put it in the four cauldron, but we would need another card to finish that cauldron. But maybe we would get a fourth toadstool and increase the final points to 20. The set collection has nothing to do with the recipe card. The set is based on the card name. The recipe is based on the card type. So these three cards score points for the set, but not for the recipe. If we had two chevrons and one crescent, no matter the collection of cards, we would receive two bonus points for that cauldron. But in this case, we'll place them in the three and score 12 points, which we employ this scoring tracker for. After the herbalist player selects the shaman goes, the higher number, but more options. The shaman can select one rare skull card, along with a normal crescent or chevron. After all players have selected, the ingredients are refilled. Played cards remain down, and after all five are played, the round resets, and all cards are claimed. With the next round, each player has laid down identical cards, which is when the favor of a cut... It got me. All right already. The favor of Akate is used to break the tie. Since one player possesses the favor, he or she would get to go first, but once used, the favor is passed to the next player. In this situation, we have a four cauldron with two sets of cards. We'll score three points for the eye and six for the fairy wings, but in addition to those points, this cauldron matches one of the rows on the recipe. The extra card in the cauldron is ignored, scoring an additional two points. There are a lot of ingredients in this game, and it continues until the deck runs out. Cauldrons not full or lost. And that's the game! And we're back. So <laughs> to talk about this game. Um, this is interesting. This game is a uh, simultaneous action selection game, very similar to another game we have. Actually, we have two games that fall into our category. Mission Red Planet and Grimslingers are both simultaneous action selection. Yeah. And I dislike those games both. 
Grimslingers, I mm-hmm. like. I, I actually, I like Grimslingers despite its simultaneous action selection. Mission Red Planet, I hate. He does. I do. I dislike it immensely. So this is a, another simultaneous action selection game. I will go to you first for your thoughts. <laughs> well, in terms of how it works, similar to Mission Red Planet, mm-hmm. I don't like it. Where someone can play a card and then it takes away basically what you wanted to do. Mm. Is which it... is why you don't like that game. Yeah, well, Mission Red Planet is different. Well, I'll say it's different without making exposing my hand. Mission Red Planet's distinction... Hmm? What's that? What's that? That's a weird one, right? Yeah, that's the steampunk one, which has. Sorry, I was thinking terraforming. Yeah, don't get the terraforming Mars. But Mission Red. Gotcha. Pl- yeah, <laughs> right there. Mission Red Planet. <laughs> the, the difference between Mission Red Planet and this game, and Grimslinger, which does it as well, is that Mission Red Planet, you can play a card that can snuff out a player's turn. Yes. You can't do that with Cauldron Master. No, you, you can, can only deny cards. You can deny cards, you can deny tactics, but at no point do you, do you, are, does a simultaneous reveal. Discount someone else's card. That's true. Grimplingers does that. Mission Red Planet does that. So I started to discount the simultaneous action selection as a tactic. I was doing a podcast with uh, Rampant Wolf Games, and I named it as one of my top five worst game mechanics because it seems like every version I see, it deals with a mechanic um, where you're denying someone else an action because you, by pure luck, played the card first. This one doesn't do that because... There, because there's an eight card, there's a four by a four by two lattice that you form, and the most you can ever grab is three cards. The most I can ever grab is three cards. So there's never a point where I'm denying you. Yes. Right. So that's why then this is a strange one where I don't mind this one as much. So you don't like this game? I didn't say that. Okay. I said I did not like that part of it where someone could deny you the cards that you want. Right. Um. But on the other hand, I find the game quite entertaining. Um, being able to strategize and... it's it, Yeah, it's very simple. No strategy to be held. Um, the point system is a little confusing to figure out. Um, yeah. What do you think of the art style? Um, I don't mind it, actually, because it's not... Oh, it's not too gruesome, but it's not too childish. Yeah, it's still got the eye of nude pig's foot and all that stuff. Um, it's a pocket game. It, it doesn't. It looks. It's very simplistic. I mean, it it, it does it in just two decks of cards. Um, the extra bonus points for this is yeah, it's kind of hokey. I mean, I do like the um, what's the other card where? There's a, what's the other card? I'm thinking of Immorals. The matchmaking game. Yes. Yeah, the ma- so this is obviously a set collection as well on top of simultaneous action selection where we have set collection trying to get these specific symbols um, and then Morels is very similar to that as well. Uh, the only difference is, and this is the other thing I like about this game, a lot of these set collection games I've also seen, especially ones with, with um, lower player counts, is that they make you take cards out, right? Like in Morels, you cut out a whole bunch of cards, right? This one, yeah. yeah, this one you don't. So, you know, there is it's entirely possibility that even though I take your raven's head on one turn, I haven't denied you for making that raven's head later down the road. That's true. I noticed because they are the skulls, though, for those in particular, there's fewer of them. I hardly saw any. True, but you did make one set of them. One set. Yeah, exactly. And then you got six extra points, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's um, good. This game also seems to be designed... It gets designed for up to four players. It almost seems like they almost threw that as an afterthought. This is probably one of the first set collection, simultaneous action selection games that seems to be properly, fully balanced for two people. I think I would prefer this as a two-player game. Yeah, I think at four players, it might get a little... It would be a little crazy. Yeah. It'd be harder to strategize, harder to keep track of the cards. Um... Like I said, even that tiebreaker card in a three-player game, if two people have the same and neither of them gets, neither, neither of them has the um, the Hecate card or whatever it's called, um, then the person with it decides who 
Oh, okay. Right, that's how. That's why I think that the game is designed for two players because it's designed. It has an inbuilt tiebreaker, and if you don't have the inbuilt tiebreaker, then it relies on someone else to make a decision, which can be. It can really end up being a very sour experience. Yeah. So, what else did you think? Um, overall, I have to say I really enjoyed the game. I mean, um, it it's not a long game. No, it's quite and... quick. It says 15 to 20 minutes, and it's absolutely right. 15 minutes. You can you think there's a lot of cards, but when you're picking up five to six cards every turn, you only get about three circulations of your hand before it's over. Mm -hmm. um, I think my biggest issue with the game is revealing these additional point cards. Because when you get to reveal them, that means someone else can deny you getting the cards that you want because they know what you want. Yeah, I don't, yeah, because the game doesn't say specifically whether or not these are revealed or not. It seems to imply that they are revealed. Mm -hmm. But that also being said, when we've had our games, they've been pretty close. I mean, we only, I only got you by one point in their last game. One point. But so you also made us calculate the points wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but that being said, I think as long as we <laughs> kept it consistent, I think yeah. it's still a fair game. Yeah. So out of 10, what would you give this game? Probably, a, probably an eight. I give it about a seven, which I still think is praise for me. Just because, I mean, I mean, in, in, in a pocket-sized game, I definitely give it a, probably a seven. Uh, with ten being something like uh, if Odin's Ravens is a small pocket-sized two-player game, I yeah, give that a yeah. nine or a ten. Yeah. This one gets a seven. So, and you get a, you give it an eight. Probably an eight. Okay, Just because it, it's nice to have something that's small, fast, easy, easy to play. All right. Well, there you go. That's Cauldron Master. I've been Chris. And Paul. Well, thank you. We'll see you guys later. Oh. What? Someone's I gonna, can imagine someone's going to have a comment of, someone's wait, where's gonna the say, ring? Where's the ring? Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.